My name is Wallace Lee, and I've been a member of CYC or involved in CYC since 1962. And that was primarily through my dad and some of the original CYC members at the time when they decided to recruit some of the uh, younger kids that were out there. I started out with the uh, lion dance uh, pretty much when I was in seventh grade and did not really come across any sports until around 1964 for the nine-man volleyball. Before that time, I was already doing some basketball, which was introduced to me through one of the nuns because I went to Catholic school, and that was around eighth grade. Uh, before that, I never touched a basketball in my life. I fell in love with the game, and a bunch of us decided to put together a team once we got into uh, high school. We basically try to follow in the footsteps of uh, another organization called KO, Chinese American Youth Organization. I learned to really enjoy the game and compete. Playing other Chinese was really an eye-opening experience because I never would have thought that there were all these other Chinese basketball teams in the other cities. You know, primarily New York, Philadelphia, and Boston. So we would travel to these different tournaments. Jumping uh, ability, he shooting was, ability. Yeah, he, he was one of the best basketball players in the air, you know, in my era when we were playing. And you know, I, I, you know, if if the kids go down the China, or anybody goes down to Chinatown, and I swear by this story, go go to the On Lem building, and, and they're in front of the building at the stairs and the posts that that are on on the street, the, the post. I swear, when we were looking at it, I, it was like twelve feet up, and everybody was saying, "Well, can you touch that, Wally?" And he jumped up and touched it. I was like, whoa. I By mean, the way, was, Alan, he didn't do it. He did it more than once. He did it twice it, just to prove he could do I, it. I mean, so they can go down Chinatown and, and go in front of the on Lung building and, and look at that post. And if they think they're really good athletes, see how close they think they can get to that. He just made a touch. Just the outside thing. The outside part of that. Yeah, that's what he was. Yeah. Everybody used to try to do it, but he was the only one who went who was able to palm the, the top of the awning. Everybody else got fingers on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it was that one. I, my memory is uh, wow. fading. That is so hard. See, this awning used to be <laughs> open. It didn't have a cover. It used to be open. Yeah. At the very top, there's like a metal piece of railing going across. And it's all dusty and everything, so we just touched it and left our finger marks up there. Yeah. I mean, that's really the biggest surprise that night. He just did it with such ease. And that was the main thing. Yeah. I did too. Wait, wait, where, where, where did you guys touch that? Where did you touch it? There, it was like the, the where the wood is. See the X, and there's a piece hanging down at the very top. It's a cross beam. Where is it? Where the 618 is? Yeah, in front of it, the side of it. Oh, I remember a time. Somehow we got hooked that time. Huh? The piece hanging down, or where the lights are? Right below the lights. There's a piece hanging down. We could touch that. <laughs> okay. Go over there and look hey, more power to you. Hey. Uh, I think Wally touched higher than that. I just don't think he remembers. So my volleyball involvement in Nine Man was in 1963. Lord and behold, the following year in 1964, and we're in the tournament. Uh, back then, there were very few young teams like us. We basically followed in the footsteps of the Boston Knights, who was the young team back then. They were about a year or two ahead of us. But through a lot of practice and just kind of learning the game, watching the older teams play, mimicking a lot of their movements, we learned the game of nine man. And in 1972, we got lucky. We beat Boston Tonlun, which we never beat before. And we ended up playing the Boston Knights in 72. Uh, that was a thriller. Uh, I don't remember literally much of it, except I got a lot of sets, which was great for me. And my buddy Al Wong was uh, part of that team. Lon Shin, uh, Al Sito was our setter. Uh, and my right side, I think at the time, was uh, Bill Ma. It was the best three out of five back then. And that championship match went all five games. You know, one for us, one for them, one for us, one for them. And then come down to the final fifth game and um, I wish I could go back to that time because you know I was more of a serious player you know like today's kids you win a championship you're jumping up and down and a lot of hoopla but that was not me 
I was kind of wish I could go back and, you know, enjoy that moment. Uh, but it was fun. So the current state of CYC volleyball, I feel is in excellent condition and shape because we've got a number of young leaders and uh, the people that are in charge and a number of other folks are all doing a great job, you know, running the program. Just like in any other sport, with each generation, kids get bigger, kids become more athletic, and that's pretty much what we have with our current teams. Our A team, our CYC juniors, which is really like an A2 program, if you look at it from a national standpoint, where the U.S. national team runs A1, A2. Well, we have an A1 and A2 right in our program. And this year's crop of young kids, I'm really impressed because a lot of them play club, and even if they don't play club, they got athletic abilities that if we just teach them the right way and bring them up along nine man to love the game and have fun, I think our program will be in great shape. We're now passing the torch to the next group of players and young adults who have responsibilities and still take the time to help with the kids and bring them along so that they will love nine man, you know, for as long as hopefully how I loved it for all these years.